In a distant village called Aidameli, there lived a young couple named Chikudi and Nkechi, who had been married for some years but had no child. The couple had seen every doctor they could find in Idameli and the neighboring villages, but no one could provide a solution. Each time Nkechi became pregnant, she always miscarried before the third month. Because of this, everyone thought she was a witch who ate her children in the womb. This caused her to be sad and depressed. Chikudi, her husband, always encouraged her to be patient and often reassured her that God's time is the best. But he had no idea what Nkechi was going through. Chikudi was a member of the King's Guard, so he wasn't always at home. One day, Nkechi decided to visit Utaka, an evil wizard. Utaka's hut was located on the outskirts of Idemeli, and he was well known for his supernatural powers. Yet, everyone avoided him because he was evil. Utaka's solutions always came at a high cost. Everyone knew this, therefore they avoided his hut. However, Nkechi was desperate to have a child of her own and could no longer tolerate the tantrums from her fellow women. Without her husband's consent or knowledge, she decided to seek Utaka's assistance. She waited for a day her husband would work overnight at the king's palace before she went to visit Utaka. She was avoiding being seen by the other villagers, so she went in the night. When she arrived at Utaka's compound, she could hear him making some incantations inside the hut. As she got closer to the hut, she developed cold feet and decided to go back home. But Utaka shouted out to her as though he had been expecting her. Come inside, Enkechi. You've come this far. Don't give up now. Don't you want a child of your own? Utaka said from within the hut. Enkechi was startled that Utaka knew her name and the purpose of her visit. So she entered the hut. People had often spread stories that Utaka's hut was littered with bones and fetish ornamentation, but the reality was entirely different. Utaka handed her a stool to sit on and offered her water. Inkechi was amazed by how civilized and receptive he was. He was much nicer and more accommodating compared to the negative stories she had heard about him. When she felt at ease, Utaka said that he knew why she had come looking for him. He told her, that he has the ability to give her a child, but there is a price she must pay. Inkechi told him that she didn't care about the price and that she was willing to do anything to have her own child. She burst into tears as she described the daily scorn and disgrace she has endured simply because she is barren. Utaka took pity on her. He instructed her to wait and then walked into another chamber in the hut. A few minutes later, he emerged with some herbs concealed in a green leaf. He handed them to Nkechi. He gave her strict instructions on how to use the herb and assured her that she'd become get pregnant in less than three months. Nkechi dropped on her knees and thanked him profusely. When she was about to leave his hut, she remembered Utaka telling her there was a price she had to pay in exchange for his assistance. So she turned around and asked him what the price was. Utaka laughed hysterically, telling her she was lucky she remembered to ask. He recounted how some people had approached him for his assistance, but they failed to inquire about the price they had to pay once he had provided them a solution to their problems. Utaka informed Nkechi that she would give birth to twins. However, she must bring one of the babies to him. He told her that one of the babies belonged to his deity while the other was hers to keep. This was the price she had to pay. Nkechi promised him that she would bring him one of the infants right after she gave birth. Utaka laughed hysterically as she made the vow. He gave her an egg. He instructed her to put the egg close to her mouth and repeat her vows. Nkechi did as she was told and returned the egg to Utaka. He smashed the egg into a calabash and permitted her to leave. Six months after visiting Utaka, Nkechi discovered she was pregnant. Everyone expected her to suffer a miscarriage, as she normally does, but she did not. Nine months later, Nkechi gave birth to two gorgeous and charming babies. They were girls. 
She was very pleased and everyone celebrated alongside her. She named one of her daughters Ifaoma and the other daughter Nioma. However, she had forgotten her vows to Utaka, the evil magician. Two years after she had given birth, she began experiencing odd dreams. In her dreams, she saw demonic spirits attempting to abduct one of her babies. She understood it was Utaka's admonition to honor her vows and bring him a child as promised, but she remained defiant. She found it very difficult to let go of any of the babies. She had grown too attached to them and was unwilling to let either of them go. Ten years later, her two girls had grown up to be stunningly beautiful and gorgeous. They were a source of pride for both their parents. But after their 10th birthday, Nioma transformed from the adorable daughter she had been known as. She abruptly withdrew and began acting possessed. She started experiencing dreams in which she was a witch, living in a coven with other witches. When everyone was asleep at night, Nioma would sleepwalk to the compound's entrance and start humming forbidden melodies. She sees showing respect to her elders. She would go to people's fields and damage their harvests. She became a terror to the residents of Idameli Village. Her father got concerned and the people of Idameli Village were also traumatized by Nioma. The only person who knew what was wrong with Nioma was her mother, Nkechi, but she refused to reveal her secret. One tragic morning, Chikudi and his wife Nkechi awoke to a terrifying sight. Nioma had slain all of their livestock and drained their blood. They found her at the back of the hut, bathing in the blood of the murdered livestock. Chikudi became terrified of her, and Nkechi was similarly stunned by what she saw. They harshly reprimanded Nioma for her actions, leaving scars on her body. Nioma despised her parents for what they'd done to her. They frequently compared her to Ifoma, and urged her to emulate her sister's behavior. This infuriated Nioma even more. Chikudi sensed that Nioma's quick transformation was not natural, so he went to the village spiritualist. He described the recent happenings in his hut and appealed with the village spiritualist for assistance. The local spiritualist performed some incantations and informed him that Nioma does not belong to them. He stated, that Nioma was the child of Utaka's deity and should be returned to him. He went on to tell Chikudi that if his wife, Nkechi, had been patient, she would have given birth to children that wouldn't trouble her when the right time came. Chikudi was furious with his wife after hearing everything the spiritualist had to say. But when he returned home, it was already too late. He discovered Nioma wielding a knife and Ifoma, his precious daughter, lifeless on the ground in the pool of her own blood. Nioma killed Ifoma out of jealousy and hatred. Chikudi became so upset that he raced into the forest and grabbed a large stick. He charged at Nioma and started striking her, but the more he struck her, the more she laughed out loud, which fueled his fury even more, and he continued to strike her even harder. By the time he got a hold of himself, he realized he had also slain Nioma. Nkechi returned home from the market to find her two girls lying in a pool of their own blood. She saw her husband kneeling alongside them, holding a cutlass to his throat. Nkechi sprinted towards him, attempting to stop him, but she was too late. Chikudi sliced his throat before she would get to him. Nkechi collapsed on the floor and began crying. If she had known... <laughs> She would have remained barren and patient, but now she is both childless and widowed. That's it for this story. I hope you really enjoyed. The important lesson that I personally picked up from this story is that whenever you seek shortcuts to your problems in life, just know that it's going to backfire. The quicker the route, the more dangerous the consequences. Always remember that all successful people in our world have one thing in common. They all had to overcome a long and difficult stage before becoming successful. There is an important reason why our ancestors loved the virtue of patience so much 
and tried to pass it on to our generation. You know, nothing lasts forever. And the difference between every season is time. Thank you very much for watching. And I want you to tell me in the comments, if you were in Ketchi, would you be able to give up one of your daughters as you promised? Till next time.